So sometimes people that have MSSPs, they don't have as much visibility as internal teams. And so you just have to take everything that I say and just apply it to your specific environment if you're interested in the idea. And then um, since since I've only had one per se like corporate America enterprise job, I've also over the past five plus years talked with many soft managers and other professionals in the industry. So everything I say, it does not necessarily like tie back to anything I'm doing particularly at my employer, but it's almost like a survey that I've been doing over the past um, 10 years, um, talking to different years at different organizations about what works and what doesn't. So a little bit about me, I grew up in two family farms and owned businesses, and I ran my own business for about 15 years before joining the information security industry. I'm also a SAMS Women's Academy graduate with three SAMS certs, and what I'm doing is taking all of my business experience and applying it practically to CPI. And I leveraged the idea of the 347 CPI program through inspiration and what other people are doing. And then just kind of sprinkled in a lot of my business experience slash people expertise. And basically, before you embark on the 247 CPI project, just have the right mindset. That's all I can stress. Just because it can get stressful. It it's a long project. I know it sounds really simple, but there's a lot of intricacies involved with it. So having a can-do, I will accomplish anything, and I will be determined, uh, definitely helps if you're going to embark on this. So the agenda. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I can barely hear you. How's this? Is this better? A little bit better, yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk really quick about the benefits to a 24-7 CTI project, uh, how to plan a little bit better for your project for a smooth implementation, how to engage the project and make others' lives better, training the soft, and finally lessons learned. So is there a right way to do CPI? Not really. So like I said, just my opinion. And as a wish list, of course, is top down volume, having big security, having someone on the board that can listen to ears of the other executives, uh, kind of changing the mindset of how people view security within your organization, actually a benefit and not a horrible and then alignment of goals between the teams and alignment of the threat teams. There's one thing in one the enterprise, there's a lot of threat teams. So the other thing is, before you embark on this, just be, honestly, it's common sense, like get your management support, otherwise you will get fired. Make sure you have logs, make sure you have the communication channels, make sure you have the design that works, the report templates already, you have a tip, threat intelligence platform, you already know where you're getting your audits from, logic, and you actually have a cell. And so why is 24-7 Basically, the bad guys are innovating all the time. So in order for the good guys to keep up with it, we also need to use what that our disposal that we have at our disposal, a SOC. So with this SOC, I've heard people talk about alert fatigue, burnout, um, missing important indicators just because they see so much. So enriching the SOC with tier one CTL duties helps decrease some of that from my perspective, and it also contributes to maternity the So CTI tier one coverage when it goes 24 seven, let's say you have a, a 40 hour or per week uh, CTI analyst like myself and let's assume that I only work 40 hours a week which 
hasn't happened since I was probably very young. Um, that means that there is only approximately 160 hours per month that are covered as far as CTI-related activities. If you have a 24-7 SOC and they decide to do CTI duties, that means that 627 percent or 627 excuse me, hours a month are covered potentially looking at emerging threats to your organization. So since executives like charts and graphs and all of that, so right now with me only working 40 hours a week, that's a 24% coverage on a 24-7, 365 business operation. And with 100% SOC, that would give you 100% coverage, which does require related issues. So right now, currently, if you only have a 40 hour per week job, I mean, TQI analyst, it's a 76 issue. So let's say you like this idea that you're like, how do, how do I even go about thinking about this? So here's a way that I found, and it is using a key success factor project plan. So what you want to do is plan, so you need your purpose, your goals, your goals, impact, responsibilities, contingencies, team engagement, project metrics, and quality control. Then we also have processes. So uh, you want to create a workflow, you know who to contact, when, where, how, have a knowledge base, and have quality control again. And then you have people. And you want to make sure you have your inner team collaboration set up. Uh, ensure the CTI analysts that you have on board are like team players, That's so helpful. Or if you want them to be team players, just consider what you want and don't want in the current CTI analyst and the quality control and the power. So with power, you want to make sure there aren't too many clicks in the kitchen because being told how to do something in like 10 different ways from two different bosses. And then empowering the CTI analyst. So if you give them, uh, I guess you could say control over a project, or at least be the main point of contact, or be privy to the kind of that's happening regarding rollout of different phases, they'll be more apt or in tune to kind of guide the conversation and guide the workflow, even if it means like carving out two hours for the people that actually do the work. So that's, <laughs> they, um, they are able to get it done. DTI analyst on the team to be able to log a lot of the questions. Helpful. So that's great. Now what? So I, in my research, I came across something called the critical success factor theory. I took my business experience and applied it to CTI. So basically, to sum it up, it was by John. Lockhart, an MIT lecturer, and to boil it down to its simple components, it's taking the critical versus the non-critical actions that are required for the project to be a success, so for your 20 percent CTI program to be a success. So in order to make that happen, like how do you, how do you translate that into CTI? Right. It's just a bunch of theories and ideas and concepts. Well, um, what I ended up doing is considering uh, is considering kind of like framing the whole project based around an attitude of customer service and kind of taking the approach that everyone within my organization is a customer. So when you do that, it's a lot easier to kind of figure it out how to do this. So you want to talk to the consumers of your ETI deliverables, and that could be even surveys, meetings, anything, and then also discussing people. So have those tough conversations of like what they like and what they like, and suggestions on how it can get better to build bridges between the teams and the organization. 
So what's a practical example of results from a critical success? So if you do this and you pile everything, and you get the all the different teams, you come up with high value CTF activities that will impact the success. So these are just arbitrary ones that I picked as a CTI analyst that I feel is important based upon getting feedback from everyone, but that's not necessarily what my organization does or what other organizations do. So uh, it's determining emerging threats and impact to the company. You review the intel, so all of the intel feeds and whatever it is that you subscribe to, whether it's a ISAC or um, a private sharing group, you review that with respect to your environment because it's already vetted intel. And then inner team collaboration and exploration of pre-exploits exploits in the wild, vendor and third party vulnerability and compromise and the report writing. And then well, what do you do with the high value CPI activities? So this is where it gets fun. So once you determine the high value CTI activities, you break it down into tier one task management and then tier two, the slide is on tier one task management. And you just have all of like the basic tasks that someone would perform as, as a tier one CTI analyst that you feel are high value CTI activities for your organization. And then of course having the shift turnover and assigning the duties to a democratic process, having the shift to the mailbox, and then the CTI tier two plus. That's more of like the technical heavy hitters, but honestly, it really depends what's going on within your organization. So, you know, if your CTI analysts are more technical, then this would make sense for them to do advanced technical research and analysis. If not, then it would probably be, I'm guessing, yes, related to BFIR or Hunt or any other, other teams. So this is just an idea. And like I said, the slides will be available, so you don't have to like, try to hurry and write all of this down. So what now? What now involves the workflow process. <laughs> Sorry, that slide. So if you want to have a feedback for the IOX that come into your environment or that through, feedback, you want to have the soft to the tier and duties and tier and research, then CPI handles it, makes block strategies to DFIR and then DFIR can Submit stuff to CTR, CTI can look at what PFIR is doing, make sure there's the whole workflow process. So, so how do you implement this and do 24 7 CTI within your organization? So, this is where training comes in, and you want to make sure you have the right mindset. Um, why do you care about something? Why do you not care about something as a CTI analyst? This will honestly probably take the most time and require the most time for them. And then, of course, um, the final process. So, anything that you have down regarding how you do something in your CTI department, just share that with the staff. And then, tools access, make sure they have access to everything that CTI analysts have from, uh, you know, on Twitter, I have a list of like researchers that I love following. So, I share that with the staff. RSS feeds, having that set up already with the order of importance of like what to look through. And, you know, of course, CTI isn't all about just looking at the Twitters, so there's more to it. And then including them in the collaboration spaces and communication channels. Make sure they have access to the info on all the feeds. And then feedback not only on the process, but also in the deliverables of the CTI process and consumers of the data. So is there anything else that you should be aware of? Yes, so implementing a 24-7 CPI project, I highly recommend for breaking down this project. You know, if you want to implement on the tip with the 24-7 CPI to make it easier for team collaboration, like I would highly recommend breaking that into separate projects um, and just getting really clear on the different deadlines how the home that it's going to take. You know, do you need to be a reward? Do you need a manager? Do you need more personnel? Uh, do you have all the tools and instrumentation and in that you need? Do you have to custom code a workaround? And then, of course, documentation and the 
as a support vendor SMA. So for 27 CTI ideas for access, uh, in my personal opinion, it's great to celebrate milestones, especially with really long projects. You can leverage your vendors, um, for instance, asking them to make a custom API script to interface with their platform. Uh, track the progress. It's nice to have pretty charts and graphs sometimes, especially for the big visual folks in your organization. And then you can just be calm in the sense do uh, you need to put a ton of projects together in one or can you break them out so that you can feel like you have some success with that. So, how can I say yes? Uh, project metrics, risk analysis. So doing a SWOT analysis as well, comparing uh, the SOC having access to highly sensitive threat intel compared to the decrease in risk exposure for having a number seven CPI program. And when I said a comparison work, uh, report, it was more the work that is currently completed by your 40 hour team in comparison to what can be completed with the 24 7 CTI um, operation leveraging your SOC. So I also said in the abstract about lessons learned, so I'll share really quick. Um, so back in 2006, I was involved with the uh, managing software development for a mortgage company. As a sales manager, don't use why, doesn't make sense. But basically I learned from doing that that I have to like, check out the code that is done and double check and triple check. Quality control all the things. Uh, just making sure you have the same mindset for those tier two CPI team. Make sure that they're both working together and not speaking over. Just uh, deal dealing with the uh, dominant personalities, I guess, for lack of a better word, like making sure that that's like, taken care of uh, or the collaboration is working well. And, uh, Project mapping, music, and and then break it into chunks and diversity of thought. I don't have the diversity of thought, hopefully. One of our CTI program improvements was that a DOJ indictment dropped, and it was like 8 p.m. And I had already worked like 60 plus hours. So leveraging the SOC to kind of review the IOX so we can then see if there is any badness and then performing the initial um, the initial analysis was super helpful. So that way I could come up and just uh, look at it. And, you know. So there's benefits to 24-7 supply. It's good try to do it if you can. Of course, utilizing the uh, project plan, any project plan, Use, it's just helpful. And then uh, really getting feedback from your stakeholders and your consumers of your deliverables the deliverables will help your project. Training methodologies and of course lessons. So credits, thank you to all of these people. Then that's me. So all of that stuff. And I'm done. Feel free to reach out to me on the, the Twitters, on Cheerio. My name is Zena Olson. I will be at the RSA. Feel free to hit me up. I'm always available for questions if you have any, if you need a brainstorm. I love, I love talking about this stuff. I can't help it. Um, so thank you so much, and I'll hand this off to whomever I need to think about. Thank you.